<laughs> Excellent. You're not going to cut that, are you? <laughs> no. Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, my name is Matt Widgery from mattwidgery.com. As you who have been following the channel know, there has been a great big humperdink and a hoo-ha about Taylor Swift and about Kid Rock and about the Foo Fighters and these other people with their fuck-nut contracts which are completely destroying photographers by taking all their images, screwing them up to a little ball and shoving them in their back pocket. However, it struck me that there is one man I know very well who does things in a completely different way and actually puts things on a much more even keel, not just for photographers, but for everybody involved in, advice, in an event. So I present to you Wesley Freeman-Smith from Shindig. Hi. It's up in the morning here. So Wesley, tell me about, uh, about what Shindig is and how that philosophy grew up and why it is so different to what we're seeing right now in, uh, in the music business. Um, well, essentially, uh, Shindig, uh, the whole premise is uh, interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary um, sort of entertainment. So largely music is the base, but it's also encompassing a lot of film work, uh, a lot of spoken word. Um, and obviously that kind of uh, approach sort of lends itself to actually respecting the sort of back-end stuff as well. So the photography, uh, the sound guy, um, it was always the intention from the start that everyone is treated uh, sort of with parity really. Um, yeah, um, essentially photographers, I used to do photography myself, but only in a very uh, sort of art school A-level kind of way. You know, lots of really gothic black and white shots and, um, <laughs> you know, trying to be really deep and meaningful. Um, I, I, I guess from the start, one of the first things that I, one of the things I was really aware of is that photographers aren't really given any credit, any, um, yeah, I mean, I kind of lost the train, my train of thought. Is there any way of cutting that out? Yeah. Excellent. You're not going to cut that out, are you? No. Brilliant. Good to know. Um, yeah, I mean, essentially... So basically, like, so photographers basically, um, I, you're right, I think, in a lot of senses, the, the people, and it's not just photographers, it's the people that don't get, actually get up on stage, but it's, it's the people that do the sound and the lights and the doors and the photographers, the people that are kind of in the background making it all happen, people that put out, you know, the marketing stuff on Facebook and actually don't get credit for the holistic sense it is a night. I mean, mm. you know... Exactly, I mean, everybody makes it happen. Um, you know, I mean, it's always really important to me if nobody else gets paid, the venue gets paid, because obviously everyone needs a a place to yes. exist in. Uh, well, it's worse when in. it rains if there isn't well, a venue. Well, yeah, so, yeah, you know, it's uh, there's no plug sockets. Uh, yeah. It's just, uh, we tried it, it's very problematic. Um, <laughs> it's called busking. Um, there's, the, the thing is, the, the other people who get, you know, the, the people that are really key to get paid, a venue, sound tech, because he brings all the sound, all the noise, everything to life, and photographer, yeah. because that's, while it's not necessarily important on the night, it's part of the long-term game. Uh, photography is how any brand, any artist, any creative, any individual who has a social media profile actually um, presents himself to the world. It's part of your identity. Um, it's, I can't think of a single, uh, no I can, books. I can't think of a single, uh, you know, art form that doesn't require photography in order to market it. You know, sure. it's um, it's such a big part of um, how you present yourself to the world. And like you say, it's our digital identity really now. That's oh yeah, of course. And everywhere we go, we have to have that that imagistic part of, of what we do regardless of what it is and, and so the choice then becomes about quality and whether or not you're happy just to get like the the crowdsourced iphone pictures of the night which you know maybe are okay in some yeah. circumstances but a lot of the time are blurry out of focus badly composed and don't tell the story particularly well yeah versus getting somebody in that actually knows about what they're doing just in the same way as with you know with the sound you could either just get some dude to turn up with one of those and kind of like wave it vaguely in the direction yeah. of the front of the stage or you can get someone there like Andy who actually really knows his onions and can tease out the best of the sound he's really big on the onions big onion Andy. man big yeah. onion man yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, essentially, um, I, I think I used to be a lot more uptight about uh, the crowds having iPhones and stuff. And it's, uh, the thing is, as long as it doesn't get in anyone's way, it's fine. But, yeah. you know, it's really important to me that the, the stuff that comes out of a night reflects the kind of quality that we put into it. Mm. Um, you know, it's curated as a whole thing, uh, you know, aesthetic, uh, sonically, um, all sorts of context and stuff goes into that. It's not just kind of, you know, here's somebody playing in isolation on a stage, it's about the visual aspect of it. Photography so go through a little yeah. bit in, into 
what Shindig is and how it's different because it isn't just it's not just music that you put on at a venue is it, it it's a little bit more holistic than that T tell me about the um, about what makes it different from just a venue what, what, what else is involved other than it just being like music on a stage for example with Shindig well for a start you say just a venue it's uh, multiple venues uh, we tend to uh, switch around a lot. Uh, usually because this is Cambridge, uh, there aren't many uh, grimy warehouse districts, which would be really interesting, uh, but mostly we're, we're inhabiting churches and coffee shops and basements. Um, so it's always been really key that venue, as well as every other aspect, is is sort of high, highly curated yeah, right. and sort of reflects the kind of, uh, you know, the aesthetic principles of that particular night. Mm. And matches um, in with actually oh yeah, what's going on there. It's, it's really interesting. I mean, the, uh, for those of you that, uh, that haven't been to one yet, I reckon coming along the next one's on the july the 25th yes yes uh, um, tell us about the venue and where people can get tickets and all that stuff um essentially uh on the internet um i believe it's uh, uh time now for ghost eventbrite.com is the tickets it's um as you say it's the 25th in st paul's church um essentially uh this is gonna i believe you're doing photography for this and it's gonna annoy you a lot because it's gonna be very dark um, one thing you should know about the shinder gigs from a photography point of view if you want to come and shoot one of these things uh they are dark, they're notoriously dark. Um, they're, what, what, what you get usually is a very beautiful, moodily lit atmosphere, which perfectly sits in tune with the rest of the curated artwork. And there's normally a, a sort of, you know, audio visual presence, there's kind of, you know, projections and, and art installations and stuff, as well as the, the, the music, and it's wonderful. However, quite a lot of that means it's kind of like dark and moody, which... Essentially, the kind of, the thing we put on the, you know, on the flyers is bring a torch, really. Uh, that's kind of the, you know... It's, I've been told that as well as the photographers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, essentially it's it's trying to make it as cinematic for the audience members as possible. So while it's important to have photography, it's always not it's not always catering for. I think we've invited photographers along to the sound check sometimes to have sort of you know visual checks, you know, just to say, <laughs> is this lighting terrible? You know, what can you do with this? You know, is it just going to be a you know a blurry picture of somebody's whatever uh, that you can't, you know? So um, well, that can be very arty. Um, yeah, exactly, and that's the thing. Like you know, as 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 documentary photographers, uh, which, you know, I, I believe that concert photographers are first and foremost there to, to document reality. And so um, if the place is dark, you shoot dark pictures, right? I mean, it's, yeah. I don't mean it's black and there's nothing on them, but you, you, you reflect the mood in them. So um, embrace the grain, embrace the, the, the grit. If it's a little a little bit of motion blur, it's a little bit of grit and grain well, and, that's and, the, and things that's like that. It's the substance it's like. of the night. It's, yeah, exactly. That's it. I mean, to it. the thing is, even if it isn't necessarily the, the intention of the night, it was always really important to me that um, uh, the nights are a platform for new work to be created, cura you know, created as well. So uh, we often ask artists to kind of collab, excuse me, uh, collaborate across mediums. So be that sort of a spoken word person, a film, uh, you know, filmmaker, sort of all respond to each other's work. Uh, the ph photographer, as an artist, has also responded to the night. So their vision, their, their, you know, the way they see the whole thing. The way they actually, it, yeah, control the light is, is part of the performance. Well, yeah, of course, you're, you're painting yeah, with light. You know, yeah. it's it's not just kind of this is exactly how it was. You know, as document, you know, documenting, it's you know, it's fairly important, but also it's capturing that individual person's uh, perspective mm. on the night and how they convey what they see as the atmosphere, the kind of the aesthetic, the, the mood, um, all this stuff can be, you know, really variable depending on who's behind the lens, you know, it's, it's yeah. really it's important like to me. It's almost like the performance actually kind of well, continues yeah. after the event, like you, you, the event is finished and then the next day or whenever the photos then go up and then you see the interpretation of the photographer that was there, it kind of like it's another perspective that you wouldn't necessarily have got by being there as well. So yeah, it's, of course. It's, it's, a, it's a nice extra bit of the a bit of the, the, the whole atmospherics of it. So, yeah, I yeah. actually really, really look forward to seeing the photos of the night I was just at because, yeah, nice. um, yeah it's just, I mean, I, I usually only work with people I really trust and really believe are, you know, quality photographers. So just seeing the artfulness, the way people frame stuff, it, it will give me a, me a different perspective on, on what happened as well. Because... Uh, to be frank, often I'm running around feeling a bit, uh, you know, uh, stressed yeah. on the night because I'm curating the whole thing. You know, so it's, on your shoulders, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, we try and do things so it's not just kind of uh, one act, next act, the other act. It's it's yeah. all kind of every aspect is kind of considered, um, including who the photographer is and you know what what sort of style they have, what kind of. You know, it, the idea is to kind of create a holistic experience for audiences and hopefully for the, the artist involved mm. as well. So there's some degree of uh, cohesion. It's not just a kind of random mishmash of different uh, styles, sounds. Um, you know, people are supposed to take a certain um, aesthetic quality from 
of what we do. Like a, like an aesthetic narrative art to the, well, yeah, to the of course. start to finish. And that's one of the things that photography does, is it kind of, you know, it's part of telling that story, that yeah. narrative. Um, you know, it's capturing the night as, as it kind of happens. Um, it's really important to me that that narrative survives. I feel completely gutted when there's no photography because there's no, not there's no evidence, but there's no retelling of that story. Um, I mean, just from a marketing point of view as well, I mean, it's, it's highly, highly important there's photographic evidence. <laughs> evidence. Uh, you know, it's... Yeah, we know where the bodies are buried. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is, this is why I want you on side. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's impossible to market anything if you don't have some kind of imagery which conveys what your brand is about, what your identity is about. And if you, it doesn't have to be something calculated it can be very uh, sincere you know there's different ways of conveying what sort of translating a meaning into sort of the way an image is composed the way the kind of lighting the kind of technique is used to frame it um, you know it's not necessarily about kind of shooting models on the front of magazines or something and airbrushing yeah, right. shit out it's marketing is really you know it, it's a form of creative discipline in how you present your ideas you know um, it's just an, another medium you know that's how I see it and we're all about there we go. so uh, yeah. this goes to show to anybody out there Foo Fighters I'm looking at you Taylor Swift I'm looking at you that there is another way of doing these things here is a music promoter who actually understands how important it is to have a nightly solistic and that that, re that respects, I think, uh, everybody that's involved in the night and treats them equally. So let that be a lesson to anybody out there that uh, is faced with another one of these Mickey Mouse photo releases. Come and talk to Wes instead, because uh, he is the Ford Vanguard, I'm sure, of what will be a new wave in, uh, in, in night promotion. We hope he is. And, uh, well, I bloody hope so. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, it'll put me out of a job. Like, um, you know, just a small point. It's, you know, I don't earn money. <laughs> so often people aren't paid, which is, you know, fantastic for me um, and them. Uh, but, you know, when you're talking on the scale of sort of Foo Fighters, Taylor Swift, anyone with any degree of, um, you know, capital, uh, cultural or, or monetary, it's, it's ridiculous not to pay photographers as you pay anyone on the team. It's anyone just, on the team. it's ridiculous. Exactly. Like. Exactly. Yeah, so, yes. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Oh, God. much appreciate that. Um, it's all right. Your perspective is very interesting as always on these things. And uh, listen, this is something I think that just shows that there are other ways of doing it. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe on that big red button. And I'll see you again soon. Cheers.